Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is, is dysautonomia causing my concussion symptoms or causing my post-concussion symptoms? And dysautonomia is a very broad topic, a very broad range of possibilities that could lead to symptoms. And so today I want to kind of talk about what is the autonomic nervous system, where is it placed within the brain, and how dysfunction in the autonomic nervous system can cause multitude of symptoms. And so um, I think we're just going to get started right away because concussion is something that can cause a lot of symptoms and dysautonomia can cause a lot of symptoms. So that's what we're going to talk about. So first one, we will look at a, at a picture of the autonomic nervous system. And on the left, we have the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic branch is the fight or flight. It is what's going to um, increase somebody's heart rate dilate pupils, um, stop salivation, because we need to um, get away from somebody. Um, it's going to constrict our blood vessels so that we don't really have blood going to our gut in order for digestion. Instead, um, blood goes to our muscles where we really need it. Uh, it increases sweat production. It is going to stimulate secretion norepinephrine. It uh, inhibits us from um, from going to the bathroom, right? We don't need to go to the bathroom when we're running from a bear. And it also stimulates an orgasm, stimulates ejaculation. Um, while on the other hand, you have the parasympathetic branch. This is the rest and digest branch. This is the branch that is kind of calming. This is where we should be most of our lives. Um, we're not necessarily running from a bear most of our lives. We should be in a less stressed mood. And so this is going to constrict our pupils. It's going to stimulate our glands, so stimulate tear production, saliva production. Um, it slows our heartbeat down, increases digestion, uh, stimulates bile release. It is stimulates secretion in our intestines so that we can have better digestion, better absorption of our nutrients. Um, it promotes going to the bathroom. It promotes... Um, it promotes sex and reproduction, so therefore it stimulates the erection. Um, and this is how the two branches kind of move. And we generally have this like teeter-totter back and forth of the sympathetic and parasympathetic branches. And so <clears throat> this autonomic nervous system is showing mostly these connections in the peripheral nervous system. So basically from the spinal cord out to the organs or the glands or the muscles that it's going to. The parasympathetic division comes mostly from the brainstem up here, and then from the sacral portion of the spinal cord, so very, very low down in the spinal cord, while the sympathetic division comes mainly from the middle of the spinal cord, from the thoracic and lumbar regions going out. And then they go to a sympathetic chain, which goes all the way up to the uh, base, of our, base of our head, and then all the way down to our uh, inner pelvis, inner sacrum. And so we have these, this wide branching that occurs outside the central nervous system. But the autonomic nervous system isn't just located outside. It's also located within the brain. And so there's this central control of the autonomic nervous system. And so this is what helps to regulate these two functions, rest and digest, and uh, fight or flight. And so we have our cerebral cortex or our frontal lobe. We have our cerebral cortex, that's our limbic lobe. Um, that's kind of more deep in here. And then we have the hypothalamus. That's one of the major regulators of that neuroendocrine system, um, which the endocrine system is hormones and that is the autonomic system. And then also in the reticular formation located in that brainstem again, specifically the midbrain, the pons and the medulla. And this helps to have basic regulatory function that um, isn't under control necessary from our emotions or our thoughts. And so I wanted to show both of these because this is important based on the paper we're gonna talk about. And so looking at this paper, 
Um, this paper is from the Neuro Rehabilitation um, Journal in 2018. The article is Concussion and the Autonomic Nervous System, um, Introduction to the Field and the Results of a Systematic Review. And so in the abstract it just talks about there's recent evidence that the autonomic nervous system dysfunction may be a potential factor that's contributing to these persisting post-concussion symptoms that people experience. And so they looked at 36 articles that were qualified. Um, many were, were good studies, um, but some were not. And then they concluded that it is likely that concussion causes autonomic nervous system anomalies. And this can relate to the symptoms that uh, people experience, this wide variety of symptoms. Um, and this is why that concussion can partially overlap with other medical conditions as well. So let's go down to page five. We're going to talk a little bit about this. So um, again, right here, what factors can account for the similarities amongst diverse groups of patients with medical conditions and patients with concussion. And it's this autonomic dysregulation. Autonomic dysregulation can be seen in chronic pain, in insomnia, so chronic fatigue as well. People with stress, deconditioning, or people that have exercise intolerance. So basically after a concussion, you, know, you can't climb the stairs as well. Uh, depression, anxiety, uh, here's the chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, that kind of goes along with the insomnia and the chronic pain. And also cervical strain, whiplash disorders are very common with concussions because as the head moves, so does the neck. And so autonomic dysregulation has this potential impact to also affect the baroreflex. So this baroreflex is a pressure reflex that um, doesn't allow blood to get to the brain. So with dysautonomia, it is this problem with this autonomic nervous system, right? The sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And so this can lead to blood pressure changes, heart rate changes, and basically different organs, especially the brain, are not getting enough blood flow. And if we're not getting enough blood flow, we can't heal. And so this baroreflex is a reflex that is going to basically help to get blood to the brain. When we go from laying down to standing, this the blood kind of drops from the top of our body down. And what happens is we need a reflex to constrict our blood vessels so that we don't lose that. And also maybe increase our heart rate to get blood back up to our brain. And so autonomic dysregulation has been found in these issues. And generally people complain of chronic pain, insomnia, deconditioning, depression, anxiety, again, all the same things, uh, and chronic fatigue syndrome in these people. And so this is just important to note um, that we, when we have problems in these areas that we can have these multitude of, of symptoms. And so now we're going to go down to another section of this paper that I think is super important to talk about. So in the conclusion, they talked about that it is likely that concussion causes autonomic nervous system anomalies. Um, but this is right here. Okay. So the autonomic nervous system anomalies after concussion are a direct physiological effect to damage to the central or the peripheral autonomic nervous system structures. So this is what I was talking. This is what we prefaced it. It could be in the sympathetic nervous system causing that sympathetic chain problems um, in the peripheral, or it could be uh, nerves that are coming out from the parasympathetic branch in the peripheral nervous system, or it could be caused from brainstem structures. And so here we have structures um, in the region of the midbrain where many central autonomic regulators reside are vulnerable to the impact of concussion. And then we also have these peripheral autonomic nervous system structures like the sympathetic chain um, regions in the cervical spine. And then whiplash can also affect these as well. And so um, this is just super important to, to look at that concussion causes generally damage to these areas. And so therefore you may have problems with 
chronic pain, with fatigue, with anxiety, depression, that's affecting these areas. And that's the true cause of your symptoms. So there is a relationship between concussion and autonomic nervous system anomalies that provide a plausible mechanism that accounts for the similarities of concussion symptoms with other medical conditions. Uh, again, just an important, important fact there. And so now there are several areas that they've looked at for treatment. And so um, several authors have proposed that there's treatment modalities that directly ta target these autonomic nervous system imbalances. This includes biofeedback, could be neurofeedback, which is looking specifically at the brain, um, non-invasive vagal nerve stimulation. This might include like a little electrode on your ear that stimulates the vagus nerve, um, although this hasn't been looked at for concussion populations. Um, other, other possibilities, so clinicians can provide individually timed sequential education um, and other behavioral variables that can affect the autonomic nervous system. And so cognitive behavioral therapy for mood disorders, post-traumatic symptom, anxiety can all help. Efforts to reduce the unpredictability and chronic stress, right? So um, just to decrease stress in one's life can help with the autonomic nervous system and that balancing. Education regarding nutrition. Nutrition is huge and that will impact the autonomic nervous system because um, a lot of nutrition obviously involves gut function. And if the parasympathetic branch is not working well, well then you might not absorb all the nutrients you need. You might not digest well. You may have constipation, diarrhea, bloating. Um, and this is where we see a lot of gut problems following concussions. Graded exercise programs can help with that deconditioning, that fatigue. Uh, relaxation and meditation protocols also help with that chronic stress. Positive event scheduling, so making sure that we are plan in events, take away the stress of that, but also have positivity. And then also treatment of cervical strain, mobility, any pain issues that may be resulting because pain inevitably leads to an increase of that sympathetic fight or flight nervous system. And that may cause uh, the dry eye, the racing heart, the poor gut function. Um, and so this is just a really important paragraph here that I want to read word for word here. These types of interventions have not been validated for patients with concussions in high quality randomized controlled trials. However, patients can be informed of this and educated that individually tailored application of concussion rehab for persistent symptoms is indicated given our awareness of the neuroanatomical principles associated with concussion and the impact of such variables on ANS or autonomic nervous system optimization. Therefore, what I really want to emphasize is that there, all of these treatments are not validated. Patients should be informed, educated, and this should help individually tailor these applications for each patient, um, which is super important in concussion rehab. If we're doing, if we're focusing on one part of concussion we have maybe pain, we may not be getting even blood flow to the brain to worry about the other issues. And so this is where um, at our clinic, we work really hard in order to individually tailor every single uh, plan that is specific to one's brain, one's injury, and it doesn't, there's not much overlap. Um, we have many different tools that we use and we try to figure out what tools are most necessary for your specific situation or brain. And so, in conclusion here, dysautonomia is the cause of many post-concussion symptoms. Anything that you think of that has to do with blood flow regulation is dysautonomia. Anything you have to do with uh, secretion and glands, so like basically ability to digest foods, the ability to tear or to sweat well, or not sweating, um, exercise intolerance. Um, again, fatigue is all dealing with blood flow problems uh, for the most part. Brain fog can be a factor as well if we're not getting necessary blood flow to our brain. And so post-concussion symptoms, there are many of them, and dysautonomia can be at the, the core of many of these symptoms. And so this is something that um, you should get checked out if you're dealing with post-concussion symptoms. And we would, happy, we would be more than happy to do that here at our office. And so if you have any questions or concerns, I would, love to, um, I would love to hear them. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would also uh, really, really love to hear them. So please let me know. And otherwise, have a great day. 
and stay well.